we're going to pick it up with some comedy in a little bit here. So let's get into our third topic. All right. Sounds good, guys. Let's get to it. There's a religious organization in Kansas that is planning on suing the public school district for teaching evolution because they feel that evolution is religious. Okay, so the name of this organization is Citizens for Objective Public Education. Oh, look, in the morning meeting we, we discuss what sh uh, things we're going to put on the show, right? And uh, Anna just read the title of the organization and I stopped her and I said, let me guess, right wing organization that cares not at all about being objective. And of course, that's exactly what they yeah. are. So because these guys are the kings of projection and misdirection, and basically trying to trick you in every way. It reminds me of like the lab coats at the, you know, at the, at the pregnancy crisis center. Exactly, where where they're like, oh, hello, they're pretending to be doctors. They're not doctors. These people, these are the least objective people on planet Earth. Yes, exactly. So um, they are suing on behalf of 15 parents, and of course they're Christian parents. And here's what they had to say. Citizens for Objective Public Education, or COPE, claims that the public schools promote a non-theistic religious worldview by allowing only materialistic or atheistic uh, explanations to scientific questions. The group argues that by teaching evolution, the state would be indoctrinating impressionable students in violation of the First Amendment. They got to understand something, which we, I can't get through their heads, obviously, which is that evolution is not a faith-based system. It doesn't say anything about faith. It's a fact-based system. So mm -hmm. it tells you what happens in the real world. Like, for example, if in the Bible it said, you know, to use the analogy I use far too often, that there's no gravity, okay, you can go with that, but there is a reality in the world, and I would caution you against questioning gravity. The same is true of evolution. It doesn't, if you believe that a moth can change colors through the different generations to adjust to this environment, it says nothing about whether you believe there's a higher consciousness or not, or that we're all connected or we're not connected. It's just a fact. So there are many things you can disagree about, but trying to you know, disagree with evolution is a fool's errand. And, and you only make your own faith seem more ridiculous when you refuse to accept obvious facts. Yeah, and if you get rid of evolution or, or teaching evolution within public schools, you're just getting rid of science. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you're just going against providing a real objective education. And, and in a sense, you're admitting defeat. You're exactly. saying the real explanation of how, of how the world works doesn't mesh with our explanation. So instead of accepting it and coming up with a different explanation, what we're going to do is say, uh, we refuse to accept facts. And so it's a losing strategy. You're not going to win that way. You can only deny that 2 plus 2 equals 4 for so long. You can only deny gravity for so long until you step out the window and realize, oops, you've made a terrible mistake. And there's like this obsession with going against anything that is educational, right? Like like making sure you change the textbooks in, in Texas so they, they don't teach about real civil rights leaders. Like don't spread real information, spread misinformation because it'll go along with our agenda. And these are the same people that keep talking about how our high, higher education and public schools are indoctrinating our kids. Yeah, but that's because yeah. they do the opposite of what they say exactly. every single time. And when they say the liberals or the scientists or the educators are trying to indoctrinate your kids, what they're saying is, I'm really annoyed that I'm not the only one who gets to indoctrinate the kids anymore. I remember the good old days when I used to do propaganda and get them to believe the religious nonsense that I peddle, right? About how Eve was created from the rib of Adam. And now I have to compete with facts and it's annoying and it's tough and I can't do it. So can I please go back to the old days where I just shut them up? And, and look, and if you believe in the Bible literally, as opposed to metaphorically, you're going to have to do that, and you want to do that, because what's the first thing in the Bible? The story of Adam and Eve, mm. and Genesis. And in Genesis, the number one problem was that they ate from the tree of knowledge. They don't want you to. They don't want you. They don't want you to. <laughs> Negation. Ned. Yeah, that... <laughs> Again, I mean, it, it's, it is amazing how many times this continues to come up. I mean, most people don't understand. I mean, you, most of us know about the Scopes trial, and, and, you know, here and there, there's a couple of other ones that we may have heard of. But, I mean, since 68, just since 1968, there has been 11 major um, trials that have actually gone to trial in various states trying to um, 
ban this. I mean, even you would think, okay, you know, Arkansas makes sense, uh, Kansas makes sense. No, it was even California. I mean, this is nationwide. And they're not looking at backing down anytime soon. About every, if you look at the statistics, it, it, it breaks out to about every three years there's a major trial that comes up on this. And it looks like that they're trying to play the Supreme Court. Every time there's a, you know, there's a major player in the Supreme Court that moves from one side to another, they're hoping it will get past the local courts and get to the Supreme Court and it'll be overturned and it'll be withheld or, you know, whatever. Um, but some of the quotes that are that are in this suit, I mean, I, Jenk and them did some of them, but to me, they're they're even worse. I mean, one of them is is it creates a hostile learning environment for those of faith. Now, how does teaching science, what we understand to be the truth, how is that hostile? It's not like we're saying you can't believe in God too. In fact, there's plenty of scientists out there that do. But no, this is this is hostile toward them. Again, playing the victim card, making it to where it's you know we're being persecuted when, in in reality, nothing could be farther from the truth. We're doing everything we can to make sure that this is. Um, the other one is is it will promote beliefs that are inconsistent with the the uh, with the theistic religious beliefs, therefore depriving them of the right to be free from government that favors one religious view over another. Now, again, where is the religious view? Science is not a religion, people. And when you try to dumb it down to that, when you try to put it on the same level as that, and look at creationism on the same level as evolution, it's not only uh, just infuriating because it's so dumb but it's dangerous well can i play devil's advocate here because we like to do this back and forth sometimes yeah. uh, ned is is what happened if uh, you know a religious person comes up to you and say hey you know you have faith in science scientists have faith in this and that you know how do you reply to that you know they say well you, it's a religion like if they claim it's a religion they you have faith in this how okay, well what's well, the difference right. Well, what what I would define it as, and I'm is, devil devil's advocate here, by the way. Oh, I, no, I, <laughs> Go ahead. You, you you know I love these these. Oh, movies, I know you do. So, <laughs> so it, don't feel bad about it at all. Don't <laughs> explain it. Um, no, to me, as far as the difference between science and religion is, one is testable. One, we can go out, we can make predictions, and we can see if what we think is going to happen actually happens. And the nice thing about it is, is if it doesn't happen. The scientific community will find that. It will weed it out. It'll, it will demonstrate that, look, you're wrong here. Um, Nebraska Man is one of the best examples of that of all time. In fact, it's kind of funny because it seems like a lot of the creationists want to use Nebraska Man as a failing of evolution. Um, for those of you who don't know what Nebraska Man was, a tooth was found. Um, it was put in a museum. They thought it was um, from a human initially. Um, one, it was only one scientist who said it was a, um, uh, a tooth from a human, um, in fact, and commissioned an artist to draw an entire species based on a tooth, which is, let's say, spurious to say the least. Um, but when the scientific community got wind of it, they went out, did real research, dug up the rest of what they could find in that area, and found that it was a pig's tooth and debunked it. It was not religious people. I remember that, yeah. Exactly. And that that's what I'm saying as far as how evolution and science in general works, is that it's, um, for lack of a better term, it's self-correcting. As long as you are honest and all you want to know is what is true, you have a very good opportunity of def um, finding truth. The, the, the more you look at something, the better chance you have of discerning is this reality or not. Yeah. Whereas when you just cover your ears or put your fingers in your ears, cover your eyes and go, nah, 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 no God is real, no God is real, it makes it kind of hard to see anything other than God. Yeah. Which, great, good on you. If that's how you want to live, fine. But do not force my kids to not have the option of learning what they want to. Um, but anyway, I can rant all night on that, so keep going. <laughs> I'm going to defer right there. <laughs> okay. Well, I... Um... I did a little bit of research about this, and I, I have some information about the people who are who are behind this effort in Kansas and in other states. It's uh, what is it called? Citizens for Objective Public Education. Now, about on their website, this is their about section. Cope, 
uh, COPE's mission is to promote objectivity in public school curricula that addresses religious questions and issues so that the educational effort uh, effect of the teaching is religiously neutral. In this context, religion is defined inclusively as an organized set of beliefs about uh, uh, ultimate questions such as the cause, nature, and purpose of or meaning of life. It includes traditional theistic religions, as well as pantheistic and materialistic religions, including atheism and religious secular humanism. And then we come down here to their little section on objective generally means not influenced by personal feelings, interpretations, or prejudice based on facts, unbiased. It means to teach, not to indoctrinate. It involves teaching methods which seek to reasonably and objectively inform students about and cause them to critically analyze competing viewpoints about religious issues and questions. Now, the best part about this is we go to the board of directors. One of the men on the board of the directors is Joseph Rennick, who had, he, he worked in the, uh, the aerospace industry. Now, let's go back over to uh, the name of the lawyer for or one, at least one of the lawyers for this motion that they're putting towards the, 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 the law in Kansas is John H. Calvert. And he is the managing director of the Intelligence Design Network, seeking objectivity in origins science. Now let's go down to the board of directors. Guess who's on the board of directors? Joseph Rennick. Wow. So they have an, uh, a concerted effort to um, undermine anything that goes against intelligent design. Now, I, I don't mean to interrupt you there, Matthew, but is there a date on that or anything like that? Date on what? People? Like like these people when they when they, uh, you know receive these positions or anything like that? Uh, no? no, I don't know about that. Oh, it's it's got like there's an extended biography here of, okay, of sorry. Their, their their histories, like what they've done in their careers and okay. stuff like that. Right. So sorry, uh, all of that information is on the websites. Just look for ID Net. We'll add that in the description. Design Network and Cope, the Citizens for Objective Public Education. And we'll add those links in the description. Awesome. And as we remember from the Kitz Miller versus Dover uh, ruling, uh, intelligent design has been legally classified as religion, creationism. So their their tactic now appears to be to have uh, evolution and atheism considered religious beliefs, so that they'll be on equal footing. That is apparently the best that they can do. Unbelievable. That's all I got. Great, great, uh, great research there, Matthew. Thank you very much. That's, that was excellent. And uh, I want to touch on the Kitz Miller versus Dover because you know that's uh, my thing. I like to really, uh, you know, because I researched that a lot in the last few years. And and that's something we have to keep on remembering, people, when it comes to uh, you know creationism and evolution. You know, Kitz Miller versus Dover. What happened is you had the school board, and they really what happened was you had a school board that really, really want to push the creationism. Uh, topic into the science classroom. So what happened is they tried to implement this new book, which w was called Of Pandas and People, into the schoolrooms, into the science classroom. And it was, you know, it was voted in by a creationism school board. It's a fact. You know, we look into that. And then, you know, then you had this one teacher and also, I forget her name. Her name is actually Kitz Miller. What happened is that, uh, you know, they had a problem with it, you know, so they want to sue, uh, you know, the... Uh, the school district or of Dover, Pennsylvania. So what happened was, you know, in conclusion, what happened was John, uh, the judge, John E. Jones, which is actually a Christian Republican, he received death threats after he, after his decision was in favor of Kitzmiller, you know, and, and basically what happened after that, they found out that I think it was two members on that panel that was like, you know, uh, they were hiding the funds and all this shit to pay for the books of Panda pandas of people so what happened is they got caught but the judge didn't end up doing anything to them uh contempt they didn't he didn't do anything to them but you know they were looking at a lot of trouble and this is what these types of people do they're sneaky they know what they're doing they're not stupid ultimately what happened is they try to use irreducible complexity simplified complexity fine-tuned universe intelligent designer it, it's all bullshit and it's been debunked at large by the scientific community you know the bacteria flagella they try to promote that or or push that with the id you know intelligent design in the courtroom and they said this is bullshit we can actually we know why it's so complex 
the bacteria from gel. We know why it's complex. And they showed why it was complex and how it probably evolved. They came out with that and they showed it. And they're like, okay, well, well, basically what happened is that they found with pandas of, well, of pandas of people where they looked into the old original versions that were written. They, you know, the judge, you know, sent out, uh, you know, they want the old versions. They looked through it and they found out that it was actually wrapped around creationism. That's what the book was for. It was to promote creationism, but they deemed it intelligent design. And that's why they got caught. And that's why this is a case that we really need to really you know, let everybody know about, you know, and just, and just get it out there, man, because there's a lot of people that don't know about that. And it's, it's actually, it's awesome. I love it. So that's all I really got to say on it. So I think, uh, we got to move on here. So uh, you guys have anything else to say on this before we move, we move on? Nope. Nope. But I, one thing I want to close here is, is evolution is a fact because we have some gaps doesn't mean you can, you know, push the God of the gaps argument in those gaps too. I'm like, that's, that, that's, what's great about science is that we claim that we just don't know. Sometimes we're, we're, we're trying to get there. We're investigating these claims and we're looking into it. Sometimes we find them. Sometimes we don't find them. So guess what? Okay. That's fine. But you can't push this God of the gaps argument into it. You know, say, well, God must've did it. No, it's, it's bullshit. You know, we got to teach the kids the facts and how to think. Stop with this trying to make our kids believe in these fairy, fairy tales or superstition or say, well, you know, since evolution is not a hundred percent, we have to teach the con, you know, some other form of evolution or creation. We have to teach. No, it's, you're not going to do it. We know what the facts are and we want to train kids to understand you know what's going on so uh i don't know yet so uh one thing one thing on that live life the other thing that's kind of funny about that remember if you've got a line a, let's say that we're talking about evolution and they're looking for the missing link because that's usually what the problem here is remember every time we find a quote unquote missing link and we put it in that gap we create two more <laughs> there's yeah. for every time you plug in one you create two so there's always going to be gaps guys it's just ridiculous not to infer from one to the next, the lineage. Yeah, exactly. It's, I'm sorry. I'm writing at the end here, but I was just I, frustrated, man. Just, I'm not mad, but it's just like, come on, man. Uh, like, I'd like how to many, point out how that, many how, how, how many times we have to talk about this, and we we have to we have to keep on talking about it. We do. We have to, because you know they're they're going to try to get one up on us, and we have to bring this up to the public. So I'm sorry, Matthew. God. I'd I'd like to point out due to overwhelming evidence that was presented to me last night on the truth of Christianity that I have to agree with Matt Hagee that if, if man says anything that goes against the word of God, then man is lying. So, you know, I'm not even listening right now. <laughs> yes, Matthew is... Wow! Matthew, Matthew is fast <laughs> you just muted. Panelist up here, guys. Alright, awesome sauce.